committed. And I remember God said, I told God then, I was like, you know what, Lord, I'm just letting you have this year. I'm not doing it this year. I'm just gonna, if they come to me, that's fine. I'm gonna say no to most, you know, whatever. And I'm just trusting you. I have always had a big personality and it was always a lot and people didn't really always know how to handle it. And so I could see that happening in my daughter and those seemingly normal tasks that I've done my entire life that I tackled with such confidence, I couldn't do. I couldn't do any of it. I'm Crystal Boyle, a corporate ladder climber turned entrepreneur, a business owner, a wannabe Joanna Gaines, and a wife and mom in the Florida Panhandle. Most of my days are filled with chaos just like yours, but in my downtime, I try to keep a growth mindset to become a better version of myself, both professionally and personally. And while there are many resources to turn to, why not learn from what I can see, touch, and feel around me? And that is right here in the Panhandle. I was born and raised in Northwest Florida, and I enjoy watching the success stories of friends and neighbors around me. Business isn't always easy, but I'm certain with encouragement and collaboration with like-minded people, we can all figure this out together. I created the Panhandle to have conversations with other small business owners like me, as well as musicians, leaders, chefs, role models, visionaries, all of the people who make Northwest Florida an exciting place to be, to raise a family, and to live life. This is the Panhandle. Let's get started. everyone and welcome to the Panhandle. Today's going to be a lot of fun. We're here with country music singer and songwriter and Northwest Florida resident Casey Kearney. Hi! We're going to talk about her music career, how she was just invited to sing the national anthem, her book, her rodeo life, and how she overcame depression. We have a lot of ground to cover so stay tuned. Casey, thank you so much for coming on the Panhandle today. Thank you for having me. Super pumped. I told my kids, they're like, where are you going? Because I got a sitter today. And they saw I had on my cowgirl boots. And they were so excited. I was actually coming to Aww, Casey yay. Kearney's house. My daughter, if you, I don't know if there's a way you can tell where people are listening to your music from. Yeah. But OK, good. Because if there was this blue dot in Holt that's constantly <laughs> on, I wanted to let you know that was just four-year-old Qu Quinn. You don't I have to be worried. That. It's not creepy. Quinn will go, Alexa. Play Casey Kearney I all the time, that. all day That's long. So sweet. Well, she actually wants guns and glitter, but she can't say that very clearly, so she just says Casey Kearney, and it works I out. I love so. it. That's so sweet. They're huge fans, and I, I'm excited. I got to wear my boots today. We were just talking how it's kind of hot, though. It's a little bit. It's warm. a little hot, but I, I say I'm half Texan because my mom grew up on a dairy farm in San Antonio, but. If you spend any time around me, you'll learn quickly. I'm not a cowgirl. Not really. No, the last time I rode a horse, um, it tried to bite me. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I was doing something wrong or just they could sense They just that. can do it. They just bite when they want to. Okay. I got bit yesterday. You did? It okay. Happens. It happens. <laughs> okay, I feel better. <laughs> but I, I do enjoy dressing the part. And you were the queen of cool boots and cool pants. So Thank you. I really love I I like that you notice that I have fun pants because I love do. my fun pants. You have very fun I'm pants. I'm obsessed. Obsessed. So if I need some cowgirl wardrobe advice. If you need some bell bottoms that are funky, <laughs> come see me. I will. <laughs> I have I'll a collection. So I went to Baker School and I had a, a very long bus ride. I was like the scenario I was the first one on and the last one off. And so when I was little, me and my two friends, we would pretend to be country music singers. I was Dolly. Uh, Naomi was Naomi Judd, of course. Mm -hmm. And Jesse was Reba. And it was all fun. And I knew quickly on though, I had no career in singing. At what point did you decide this is what I want to do? And how did you get started? So we did, I loved those same kind of things. I think we're close to the same age. So I mm -hmm. loved the same ones, Trisha Yearwood, Reba, yeah. all of it. And my sister and 
we would just sing and jump on our bed and all that. But I had no like thought then. Yeah. I was three kids, 26 years old before I started actually singing really? in public. And I had horrible stage fright. I had, that's when I started learning how to play guitar. I was giant pregnant when I started learning how to play any kind of instruments. So it was very much a later in life thing. I had already had several careers before I had ever settled in on music was what I was supposed to be doing. And it's the thing I've lasted the longest in. So that's fun. What made you want to get into music? It's one of those things that once you got bit and once I figured out I could do it, then I was really excited about it. And so then I really wanted to do it. And so um, I, stage fright was a big, big deal. And there was a family in our church that really, I started in church and there was a family in our church that really helped me get my confidence and really just kind of taught me a lot, taught me a lot about um, playing guitar. Every time I would try to, I was self-taught, but I would pick the brain of every single guitar player I came in contact with, you know, and YouTube. Um, but but they really helped me get over that, you know, yeah. go to get over that stage fright. And then I entered this contest when I, I was watching them up there one time it was at Destin Commons. Mm -hmm. I was watching this karaoke contest and everybody up there was super nervous. They were really good singers, but they were super nervous and they weren't entertaining at all. So it's like, wait a second, if I go up there and have fun, then yeah, and that's when it clicked. That and so the one of the judges came up. I was I ended up winning, and one of the judges he's like, they had a better voice, but that stage presence is what got you. And so that's what I realized. If I'm having fun, they're having fun. And so then that's when it really just kind of started growing. It was hard when the kids were real little because uh, babysitters and just it was just hard being gone. And the music is down there on the beach, where yeah. to really play a lot. And so I had to um, go and do that. Uh, you know, I, that was too much. So I had to kind of, so it was off and on. But then when I hit that point, I was like, this is it. This is what I got to do. And it's now or never, I'm going to go to Nashville. So that's cool. Go into Nashville. I can't even imagine. So that's where you, you go to make an album. Is that where yeah, you yeah. And okay. I mean, there was a whole process there of getting connected with the right producer and the right people to kind of help me to be mm -hmm. able to do it. But then once I did, then he really helped me make Guns and Glitter, which was my first single. And he helped me do that. And he's done several other projects for me since. And he does, his name's Doug Cahan. And it's great. It's really fun. Who was your biggest inspiration musically? You mentioned Trisha Yearwood. And I had so many. And so that whole 90s country era was a ton. But then there was also the Christian music world mm -hmm. that I loved. I loved the DC Talk and Amy Grant and all of these different things. So it was very diverse. And then, of course, my parents with the things that they liked to listen to, Eagles and Air Supply and <laughs> all that fun stuff. And so, I mean, so I picked up a little bit along the way from everything. You can do it all. Yeah. But 90s country, that was my that was my favorite. That's, that's what I love. That's loved. the baseline that you built from there. Yes. That's that's cool. Now, most recently, you released a song, Waffle House. Yes. What's the story behind that song? My friends, um, Rob and Kelly, I met them at a show one time, and they told me their story just in passing. And they were like, yeah, we've been married for 30-something years. And our wedding night, we got married, and then we went and slow danced at a Waffle House. And I thought it was so cute they didn't have like an actual wedding wedding thing. Like you know? reception. And yeah, that was the reception kind of thing, was at Waffle House. And I thought that sounded like a country song. It, and yeah. so I just kind of wrote it and rewrote it and me and Doug finished it and it um, it ended up being really fun. It ended up, I, I loved it and they've had really a lot of fun with the story and the song and so I've loved it. They're kind of like stars now. Yeah, yeah. And so then we did the video and they we used them and then their mom, uh, them and her mom and their daughter to kind of like age progress. Oh, cool. So they were all, everybody in the video is actually like kind of related. They're the story. Yeah, and it makes the whole story an age progression thing, which I loved that That's whole neat. part of it. I didn't realize that. I just thought you had actors that you no, lined up. So. The middle couple is the actual is couple. That's the younger one's their daughter and the older one is their mother, is her mother. And so it was really sweet. And it was such a fun day for them and to see them be able to do all that, it was great. Was that your first music video? That was my very first one, and I'm actually emailing back and forth this morning with um, for we're setting up for the second one. Oh, wow, so. that's exciting! I noticed a lot of the scenery in it, and that was just neat we did to see as a local. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Twin Hills Park was a lot of. We did it. Twin Hills. We did that Waffle House on 90, yeah. and then um, yeah, we did it at my friend's house. She um, lives like north of Crestview. We did mm -hmm. some of it there, and then. We did a little bit at Cospa, like behind the coffee house. They have a beautiful courtyard yeah. that like, it's just the hidden gem of Crestview. And so we did some of it there. That's where they proposed in the video. Yes, right? okay. exactly right. I know, yep. I know my Crestview you area. Do. You do. <laughs> <laughs>
But it was fun to watch Bo, enjoyed watching it too. It's very sweet. Um, the next one's a lot more dramatic, so I'm excited. It? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be, it's totally different. I'm excited, it's gonna be fun. A lot of your songs tell stories, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that takes a tremendous amount of just creative energy. So what is your work style? Do you treat it like a job and you work on it so many hours a day, or do you just like, you know, disappear and immerse yourself into it to knock it out? I wish that I did. I wish I was disciplined enough and I had like the organized life enough to be able to say, this is my writing time and this is what I'm doing, but no. no and life so happens. with three kids and then they're homeschooled and then they rodeo and just gig life and just everything, it's not that way. And so I really, I used to get frustrated. I used to try to write at home and then now I've understood that I just, it's impossible. So I can't, I get interrupted too much and it mm -hmm. interrupts my thought process and it gets frustrating. So I I really do better if I write I write ideas down all the time every day all day write down ideas and just in my phone and my voice memo all that but then I go away for a few days and then just lock myself in a hotel room yeah. and I just write and write and write and write and so um, or just go with my friend um, Doug uh, my producer up there and then we'll go and write and finish I'll be like hey I got these ideas and we'll finish writing them that kind of thing so a lot of people they have they write every day I wish I could I don't have the so you're a sprinter. My life isn't yeah. that way. Yeah, it's you just it, it doesn't work that way. And maybe someday it will, but right now, this is the only this way I can the get season. it done. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes sense. And that I think a lot of us are built that way just because and this is not the only thing that you do. I mean, your life is very busy. Um, so you just do what you can to get it done. I do. It's And it's really just, yeah, I just fit it in where I can and try to make sure I'm still creative and still creating. Mm -hmm. But I have a few songs right now I'm working on. I just want... I need 30 minutes to sit down with my guitar <laughs> so I can finish them. <laughs> it, it plays in my head over and over and over again yeah. and until I get it out. It won't stop. So Let's get you a hotel room and <laughs> I know. So I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> I know. I'll see y'all later. So for anyone that wants to get into a music career, like what advice can you give them? Like get into a music career professionally. I okay. want to do this and I, I want to do, this. do gigs I do this. and I want to make a, a Learn CD. how to play on your own. Don't okay. have to count on other people because when you have to count on other people, then you it's going to end up being frustrating. And that was a huge frustration. So I really, it was one of those things that I came to a head that I'm like, I'm either going to have to do this myself or what. That's one major thing. Um, another thing I would say, just on a practical level, play all the genres, play as much different diversity as you can mm -hmm. and don't stick yourself in one particular thing um, because you can reach a broader audience. And so that's a big deal. One thing I've learned and how to read a crowd, learn early how to read a crowd, know who you're playing to and what they want. And then you can, that's when you can keep the room having fun. And so that's part of being an entertainer versus just somebody up there playing some music. Mm -hmm. um, as far as practical, no, don't, don't take things personally. If you're playing and they're not clapping, don't take things personally. They're just talking. They're, they're eating dinner. Yeah. Um, and you know, those kind of things. And when you're, you're going to get a whole lot of no's before you get yeses, a whole lot of no's before you ever get any yeses and just don't quit. So when it's that time and you're getting all those no's, don't quit because then you're going to quit before you actually start your yeses. And yeah. then you're not going to miss the fun. You're going to miss the fun part. So you'll, you'll put sell in yourself a, short. Yeah, there really is that hole. You've got to put in the work before mm -hmm. you can. And there's different sayings of you've got to, you're going to write a hundred terrible songs before you'll ever write one good one. And you're going to, you know, play a hundred gigs that's going to be awful before you actually get. And I mean, some of it's true and some of it's not true. But I still have one of the songs with my very first song. I, one of the very first songs I wrote that I still play. So it's not like it's all the way true, but it is. You've got to put that time in. And, and get thick progress. skin. Yeah, get thick skin. Lord. <laughs> it's rough out there. It's cutthroat. And just be nice. Don't be a jerk. Gosh. There's yeah. so many people that are so mean. There's no reason to be mean. There's enough music fans for everyone. That's good advice. You heard it right here. <laughs> that was Don't a be whole a jerk. That was a whole pile of information. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> I love it. We could all use that advice yes. from time to time. Yes. So this is a, a career for you. The, there's whether we like it or not, there's always like the boring business side of things. Yeah. Like, do you do your own invoicing? Do you track your own expenses or do you hire that out? You know, I've tried to hire it out. I've tried several different ones and I've had several different ones. I've done it both ways and I always end up back just doing, doing everything it. myself and it's not good. I need somebody really bad, <laughs> but I do end up doing it myself just because if I have to prepare everything first, 
I feel like I'm still doing the work, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there's a whole business side. And I would go into the advice of it too. Learn marketing and learn social media stuff. I am a podcast nerd. I listen to so many and I really, I'm a nerd. And, but you do, I listen to businesses and things. There's a whole business side. If you're wanting to make this a career instead of a hobby, like you've got to learn the business side and you've got to learn how to do those things. Did I answer the question? You I don't did. know if I did or not. And so that there are resources out there that you've turned, like you said, podcasts. Yes. And... There's so many resources to help you along and to learn how to do those things. And once you get it set up, then it kind of is kind of automated. You know, mm -hmm. you have the things that you have to send people and you have it already ready. You have your systems um, yeah, built. And that's helpful. But yeah, you, you still have to get it all set up. And so for the most part, I do a lot of it minus a few things here and there. Do you do your own marketing Facebook stuff? Depending on what it is. Yeah, yeah. depending on what it is. If it's, um, if I'm releasing something like this, pat, like when I release either the album or Waffle House, one or the other, or maybe both of those, I did have a company that helped some mm -hmm. with that. Um, but then a lot of it, I've had, I've learned so much. And by the time you learn all this, then you're like, let me just do Might this. Well just do it. Yeah. Because then if you have so, an idea, you can do it right there. Yep. And that's when I have late, late nights. And so I get a lot of really good work done late at night when the kids are not talking to me. So I understand that's that. helpful. Yes. You, I know on Facebook, we're talking about Facebook. You recently posted that you're trying to cut back. Yes. Is that because you are getting into something else or are you just getting a little burned out? It's a mixture of it. So my kids are getting that age. Like my, my oldest turned 16 recently and they're getting to the age where I know that I don't, I only have this much time left with yeah. them at home. And so I don't want to be so busy all the time and gone all the time that I miss that. Yeah. And so, and that's what I've been, I've hustled really hard the past five years and really um, a learning marketing business music, just all of it. I've hustled, hustled. Um, and so I needed some time. And so I remember I prayed this prayer in January. I was like, God, this is it. So normally January, September, October, through those two months, and then come January, you're booking for the year. Yeah. And so whatever you book then, that's what you're booking. You're and I remember God said, I was telling God then, I was like, you know what, Lord, I'm just letting you have this year. I'm not doing it this year. I'm just going to, if they come to me, that's fine. I'm going to say no to most, you know, whatever. And I'm just trusting you because I've always been with the grind and I've always been hustling and I've been you know doing what I needed to do and so I did so the first couple months it was good it was just a couple months I was like this is great and then April hit <laughs> April. and spring so break all and, these, uh... yeah. and it was cool because these doors I'd never knocked on you know what I mean I didn't try to do these things and they just they started coming and so I just think it's such a blessing from the Lord because when I decided you know what I want this time with my family and God's like well you do this and I'm going to help you do this and and it really it's that whole seek first kingdom of God and all these things be added unto you is that Bible verse and it's those different ones that that he really started directing the path when I really decided I'm not going to try to drive this ship so hard mm -hmm. anymore and so that was really really helpful and been a blessing to my heart and it really it means a whole lot that that God still got me even <laughs> if I'm tired and because I really it, it some of it's burnout and some of it's just I want to be with my kids mm -hmm. you know I can so I'm, it's a mixture of it all but thankfully God's just kind of taking care of it they talking <laughs> I'm sure that was just a huge relief just to, to, to hand it over and be like I'm yeah. tired of being making these decisions. Just show and me I what had, I need to do. <laughs> I had to do it uh, multiple times. I had to release it because I'm a control freak and that yeah. very much type A, very much like driven kind of person. Yes. And so I had to remind myself over and over again that this is not me falling behind. This is me choosing to rest. This is me choosing a season of of time to do this. This is not this doesn't mean that I'm you know, not progressing and moving forward with, with music career. This doesn't mean it because I've already done more than I set out in the first place. Wow. All I wanted to do is play some gigs, you know? Yeah. And so I've already done more of that. And I just had to remind myself of that over and over and over again. This isn't failure. This is me choosing to step back and take a breath. And so, and if I want to pick it up later on and run hard, then I can. April's running hard. Um, May, yes, May is. is running hard. It's, yes. it's a big one, but, um, but then after that, I don't have a ton of stuff booked and I want to lay back and I want to be able to enjoy the kids and rest some with them. If you start a podcast on that topic, just letting go and, and 
I will be your first subscriber. Aww, so please thank do that. You. <laughs> I think that's good I've advice. Thought, I've thought about it, and it's one of the like. If it was up to me, I would be doing all the things. Oh uh, yeah, all the things. But there's only so many hours in a day, and I do it. So I feel like once my kids are grown, that's when I decide I'm just gonna take over the world. We'll see. So I know people can find your music on Spotify, Pandora, and we can get your CD on your website, mm -hmm. but where can people see you perform live? You're talking about your gigs. Where can we go? I'm all the way, I'm on 30A a lot, like yes. Santa Rosa Beach area. I'm there a lot and I play a lot of private parties and um, there is, I, I play in Niceville sometimes. The schooners in that uh, third planet are really fun in Niceville, um, but for the most part, when you decide to make the trip down there to the beach that's usually where i'm at okay. a bunch of different places down there so people can watch your facebook page casey kearney music and yes. you post where you're gonna be yes yes or bands in town also you can follow on there and then it'll email you and oh, tell okay. you when yeah I didn't know about when that. life starts to travel again then i'll i play other places like texas and oh, wow. you know nashville georgia the different places like that i love um, to travel to and I had stuff booked um, last year that all got canceled so but I didn't want to fool with it this year because I just didn't. This wasn't the time. Too much unknowns going yeah. on you know of what's yeah. gonna happen. There's something coming up is it Moon Dance? Moon Crush. Moon Crush. The Moon Crush Festival I'm so excited about it it was a huge opportunity. When is that? April 30th. Okay. It's the, the festival is five days it's on Miramar Beach I perform the 30th. Okay. Yes. Before Jason Isbell, me, Forrest Williams, and Luke Langford, they pick three locals and to open for him. And that's awesome. It's really fun. I saw that Cheryl Crow yes. is going to be there. That's a Cheryl huge. Cheryl Crow, yeah. Need to Breathe, Grace Potter, Margot Price, some of those. I love those. I love their writing and their voices, all different things about them. And so, yeah, I'm really excited. So you travel and do music. Who's like the coolest singer you've met on your adventures? I don't know. They, I don't know. There's been a bunch of them. I really loved talking to Pam Tillis. She was very sweet and very fun. And I loved telling her about how my, my brother was in love with her when, when we were kids and all that. She was just, she was really cool. I loved her a lot. Um, it just all depends. And you know what happens is, to me every single time is that, so Jason Aldean and Luke Bryan, they're always hanging out down there, yeah. always. And you know where they come? The next day. So I'll be playing that same exact restaurant and that same exact venue and it's the next day before they oh, ever go. With the, they come, they'll post pictures and I'm like, why couldn't you come just yesterday? There. When Aww. I was there, it happens all the time. It's just yeah, I've never ran into anybody famous yeah. down here. I just, but I'm not a very observant person, so it, I could probably sit right by them. Yeah, and, just be and then totally never oblivious. know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it literally it happens all the time. Well, we're gonna have to plan to come see you Do because it, come on. my kids just love it and I love Yay. it. You're a good entertainer. I mean, Thank you, you, you right? You've learned how to read your audience. It's a fun time. So Thanks. you've really accomplished. I think your dreams. So Thank the you. rest it's, is just gravy. Fun. Yeah, the rest <laughs> is just fun. It's just yes. good. <laughs> so moving on from music, I brought your book. Aw. So this is Felicity. And you wrote this children's book. And I'm going to read the back. It says, Felicity is extra in every way. Extra bright and extra fun with extra big dreams. Enjoying life in all the best ways. Some of the other girls don't like her. They think she's too much. When Felicity decides to give them what they want, she soon finds out what is important. So it's about a flamingo who ultimately decides that her version of herself is the best version of herself. So what message were you trying to, to put through in this book? That exact message, really. Yeah. Um, I have always had a big personality and it was always a lot and people didn't really always know how to handle it. <laughs> and so I could see that happening in my daughter and, and several other ones around me. And I was like, gosh, I hate this feeling and I don't want to see this duplicated in them. You know, I want them to be big, still be nice, but yeah. be your big happy self. You know what I mean? Be wear big, the bell bottom pants. Wear the bell bottom pants. <laughs> wear the sparkles. Do it, yes. you know, and be yourself and, and not necessarily take the no just because everybody wants to tell you you're not good at it or put you down and things like that. Um, just go for it. You want to do it, then go for it kind of thing. I love that. And I was listening to Rachel Hollis podcast last week on a very rare jog. And she said, don't let anybody blow out your candle. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the same sentiment that yeah. she was talking to, to grown women. And so I, the Felicity persona has to have helped you in your music career. Yeah, and it is. And that's, it's very much, I mean, it's, it's a little reflective of my story and a little, a little made up in a lot of ways too. 
Um, it wasn't necessarily mean girls. It was a bunch of mean old men that were mean about <laughs> about me and my music. Oh. But um, it's the thing is, is that it's it is it's in all of us. And so my book, even though it's written like a children's book, it's been grown women yes. who have really responded to the message and have really they bought it for their other friends. Like, I've got my mom needs this, my friend needs this, my sister needs this. So it's been grown men, uh, women who have really resonated with it and their kids too. But. So you co-wrote the book with your daughter, Annabelle. Yes. How old was she at the time? Um, she was 10, I think. Nine and 10. That's, that's so sweet. Do you think at that age, she got the message? She knows what, what y'all were trying to tell I people. I think so, yeah. And she, um, a lot of it was that she inspired it and a lot of it and she helped pick out, you know, my sister illustrated it. So she helped with the illustration part of it. And um, I think that she was getting it. And I loved when she came back and wrote like uh, in the back of the book where she wrote her little note to it. I loved it because that really was her getting the message and saying um, the Aww. other people I want to read that, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. I want to dedicate this book to my Nana. I loved her very much. To all of my cute, sassy cousins that tried to be like me. I also want to encourage everyone to be nice. Be who you are and don't be someone else. Just because you want to be their friend. They will like you for who you are. Annabelle. So I thought so, it was so deep for a 10-year-old, yes, 9-year-old, ten 10-year-old ten year old to write that. Oh. And I loved it. And it's not, I mean, she's not perfect. She's still a kid. But it's still one of those things that she understood and grasped and, and has had to deal with for a long time. And so this this is a problem that's not going to go away. And you, the yes. book, the characters are very, just a lighthearted way to mm -hmm. tell people to be proud of who God made them to be. Mm -hmm. This could easily be like a series. Do you see it turning into a book series? I or? would love to. And I have... I have them half written. I have several more oh, half good. written, but it's just the time part of it. And it's yeah. just the thing. So I think eventually I want to, and I may like end up doing like a re-release kind of thing. Um, it's, it's called being overwhelmed with life, yeah. you know? <laughs> so I just kind of had to pick my, that season, that phase things. will come yeah, into play. Yeah, yeah, and I was happy I got it done. It released in the middle of COVID, so I didn't get to do all the things that I really mm -hmm. planned on doing. So I've got to get the ball rolling back on it again and really help it go where I wanted it to go and do what I wanted it to do. I just haven't put the focus on it recently. But yeah, I really, I would love to make it, as, even if it's just a short series, yes. I would love to make it that. And So where can people get your book? It's on my website. Okay. Yep. CaseyKearney.com. Get it. I highly recommend it. I have a four-year-old, and I mean, I have a feeling it will stay on the bookshelf for a long time, it. and we'll reread it over and over. Because yes. as she ages, she's going to she'll need the encounter. Still. Yes, she yes. will. So, Casey, thank you for letting us dive into your music and, and literacy careers. And when we come back, you know, this isn't all Casey does. She's a wife. She's a mom, and so we're going to talk more about her home life, her rodeo life, and then get a little deep to talk about how she overcame depression. We care about this community because it's our home too. Adam Sanitation. We're locals committed to our community. Sign up now for neighborly service from the friendliest little garbage company around. So we're back with Casey. We're going to talk a little bit about home life and you live on a dirt road. Um, a very you live, long dirt road. Yes, you do. It was very um, long to get here. It's beautiful, though. And <laughs> I mean, your your farm, your ranch is so beautiful. What is it like living this country life? It's it's wonderful. I feel like I have a double life a lot of times because I do. It's completely beach tourist music life down there yes. and then up here it's very much country life i joke a lot it's camouflage and cowboy boots all the time up here you know <laughs> um but it's it's really fun i hate the dirt road despise the dirt road but it is beautiful yeah, it's peaceful mm -hmm. Have, did you grow up here we've lived here 15 16 years something okay. like that mm -hmm. so you homeschool your children and that allows you flexibility to yes. get into the rodeo sport. I know nothing about the sport. So do your kids 
do they participate? Like, is it, is it actual competition? Yeah, it's very, very competitive. And we, they were in school um, at the same time. So I, I was gigging, they were rodeoing, they were just getting started. And we found that I don't know how people do both because it was really tough. And we were, I was apologizing to teachers all the time um, because we were either late or messed up, whatever, because you travel a lot yeah. with rodeo. And they dove in, they, when they found their passion, they dove deep. And so they practiced like every single day, every chance they can possibly get and it's really I mean it's intense and it's um it's a lot it's physically and you know just everything and so they're they do really really well in it it's very fun um but they also work their butts off at it and yeah. so we love it it's really fun but homeschool gives us that flexibility for them to be able to do that they also love to work so they all have their little jobs that they work and um Yes, you're telling me your youngest is 11 and she's she's, she's been working, yeah, yeah, she's been working filing papers and so That's she awesome. she loves it. So my kids are going to regret that you told me that I'm like, "Bo, you are give me a job." It's time. <laughs> so, they participate, they compete. Do you get involved? Are you doing any shows? Just a little bit. I love doing it. I really really do, but the older I've gotten, the more chicken I've gotten, and then I also I'm like I know my uncle and my mom are like, why don't you stick with what you're good at? Why do you need to do this? <laughs> and it's kind of true. Like, what if you get hurt? And so it is kind of true. Like, I don't want, don't want to do it enough to where I'm going to get really hurt. And then I can't yeah. actually play because I always have all these commitments that I'm committed way far out. And then because I want to go run some barrels, then I'm going to get hurt. But no, I mean, I love it. I absolutely love my horses and I love everything about that whole life. Um, I just only compete this much. My husband does a lot. He loves to team rope, and so he does, and the kids all do. And I love doing it with them so that I'm part of their world. Mm -hmm. They have zero interest in music, but I'm oh, at least they? part of their world. And so it's really fun. I love to watch them help me. I used to do it years ago when I was fearless and not afraid of getting hurt and would do anything. I did it years ago when they were tiny. And then now, I don't know. Now I'm kind of more of a chicken than I used to be. Well, we don't, I mean... I fell in, in, like on my knee of two weeks ago or, or two months ago, and like it took forever. Like we yeah, don't bounce back as quickly, I so I can imagine like. I our, and like, I had oof. I had a couple concussions, and I had oh I had quite a few like injuries in my thirties that have made it to where I'm kind of like I know how long it took to heal from that, so I don't want to get hurt. But I love doing it, and I don't want to yeah. quit. And I'm afraid if I don't do it now, I won't do it when I'm sixty. So yeah. it's. So you're just taking a little bit. I'm trying to. Yes, I'm trying to. Y'all just came off a pretty big rodeo weekend. Was, we did. Were mm -hmm. there everybody healthy? All their bones? Were yeah, everybody's be? good. Okay. Everybody was good. Any Every big wins? They did. Um, Micah won pretty good. Yeah. And then Annabelle had, um, she, there are different goals or different things. Like, obviously, you want to win top, you know, whatever and win money and all that. Um, but for her, one of her, she got eighth place, but it was a huge accomplishment because we're talking some of these girls compete at the pro level. So for her to finally make that top 10 was a huge, wow. huge accomplishment for her. So she may not have come home with money, but she was really proud of that. And so people, if they want to get a taste of what that life is like, you do share a lot of that on your Casey Kearney Music Facebook. So I that's do. been fun to watch because like I said, I, it's foreign to me, but... I try to. I try to share some of it without being like overload because I know that it is. And, and a lot of times there's not a signal where we're at because <laughs> we'll be middle of nowhere, Alabama. But yeah, it's good. I like watching it. So keep it up. Thank you. So I think something that doesn't get discussed a lot in small business is it's hard. Um, um, you got to have good mental health. You have to have a good family life. And you recently posted something on Facebook that got my attention because it, it hit pretty close to my life as well. And I'm going to read just one little excerpt from it. But it says, I look back on the lost grown woman with three kids who physically and emotionally couldn't get out of bed. Then I look at life now and I'm so very thankful, thankful for the people that surrounded me to get me through the thick of it. This is the first year I don't feel like I have to keep moving just to keep moving. I don't feel the pressure to survive. I feel like I can breathe. And you posted that pretty, I think, soon after you had that conversation, like God saw you take over and you just felt that relief. Mm -hmm. And so what was the response to that post? Yeah, I mean, everybody, I, I post often and I used to blog on a regular basis and they would, and everybody's always responded to that and I'll get a lot of messages, like private messages and, you know, just different texts, private messages from people I don't know, texts from people I do and just different people that, that relate to it and they appreciate that it got 
that I would say it out loud, you know, and that I would admit it out loud and just talk about it out loud. And because I do, I think it gets a bad rap. And I mm -hmm. think that people don't want to talk about it and they feel ashamed about it. And it's hard because I understand that. And at the same degree, unless you like really just to really acknowledge where you've been so that you don't get back there again. And I think that using the word overcoming depression is interesting because I don't know that you necessarily, I mean, you do overcome it, but it's a constant thing. And so it's a constant thing that I have to be aware of that if I run myself too ragged or if I let myself get too overwhelmed, or if I'm putting too much pressure on myself, I can easily get myself back into that place. Mm -hmm to do it. And so it's a constant awareness that I don't want to go back there again. And so I'm fiercely fight for, you know, just my mental health and for our marriage and for, you know, our kids and as to be a better person and a better mom, because if you're not aware of it, then, you know, it can, you can go back there. I think more of us are there than, than we realize because we don't slow down enough to just really acknowledge how we're feeling. Right. At what point did, did you realize that something's got to give, this isn't working for me? Um, mine was a, mine was a hardcore meltdown. It was, and I mean, and it, I had to make changes and I had to make baby step changes to where mm -hmm. I couldn't go into Walmart. I would grow, drive myself to Walmart, start to get out of my vehicle. And I remember just crying and my physically could not make myself get out of my vehicle and go in there because I was so overwhelmed at the thought of going in there. You know, I didn't want to see anybody. I couldn't, I didn't know what I, I, I knew what I needed to get. I had my list and yet I couldn't, I was overwhelmed by the list, you know? Mm -hmm. And so those seemingly normal tasks that I've done my entire life that I tackled with such confidence, I couldn't do, I couldn't do any of it. And so I felt then, then you're mad at yourself because you're like, why am I so weak? And then for me and my personality, I've always been, you know, tough, bossy, strong, you know, go get it. And so for me to feel so weak and helpless. And so for my mom to have to come drag me out of bed because I needed to go take a shower and I needed to go do something, get out of the house. You know, it was very humbling and very mm -hmm. hard. And I had to eventually make that choice and make that decision baby step, baby step, baby step. And I had friends that had been through it. If you're surrounded by people that have never been through it, then you get that whole, what is wrong with you? You have everything going for you. Why would you be like this? Why are you so sad? And why are you, why are you sad? You know, yeah. and, and why, and, and then it makes it worse and it just, it just piles it on there, you know? And so when you um, are, do at least have a couple people who've been there and you're like, I understand that you are feeling this way and it's not, and you have this like warped sense of reality and you have somebody to help you say, look, I know it feels like there's no hope, but there is. And you just got to get out of this tunnel and, and you will, and, you know, and say, and, and, and stop making you feel like you're crazy or stupid for feeling for the way having those feel. feelings. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, I just, or, or even ungrateful and I, I just, so many different feelings that go with it and so many different things that go with it. And when you do, but giving yourself grace to come out of it and giving yourself grace to baby step your way through it and then not letting yourself go backwards. If you know this is not a good place for me to do, then don't go backwards. Don't go there, you know? So this doesn't sound like something you can do alone. Like if you had advice for somebody who's in the thick of it, you, it's hard to overcome this alone. Go find people who support I think you. Watch who you're surrounded by, because mm. if they're feeding you negativity or if they're feeding that, if they're even that with you, you know, like if you I kind of joke about like an Eeyore kind of friend, if that's what you're around all the time, then that's what's going to keep you down all the yeah. time. And then you may love them and they may be your family, but that doesn't mean that that's healthy for you and that you need to, you need to counteract that with some joy and some good people that are going to put good things, whatever you put in there, that's what's going to come out, you know? And so really li watching what you're listening to, watching what you're watching, you know, and repeat those things. I had things that I would repeat every single day, Bible verses and just different um, sayings and different things that I would have to repeat. In the beginning, I'd have to say them several times an hour. Like, no, like just because I feel like I'm crazy right now. No, I have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is within me. And I would just over and over and over again until you start. And then it gets less and less that you actually have to, have it, you know, mm -hmm. but I'll still like, even I start tearing up when you start reading that, just because I still know that that feeling is there. And I still know that you could always, and it's just, a, a, I don't know. I feel very grateful because when you've been on one side of it to the very lowest pit, and you're just thankful. I'm thankful I survived it. And I'm thankful I did. So I'm thankful for every single thing I've gotten to do since then, because otherwise I wouldn't have. And, but you're very aware that just because you overcame it for that period doesn't mean like it can't come no, back. It doesn't mean in, it so. can't. And so I have to be aware of it mm -hmm. and I have to do it. And it, it, 
it keeps you humble and it keeps you there and it keeps you knowing that at any moment you don't it doesn't have to and and it and you do and it helps i do have a lot of family around and they're really great and i do have a really great support system with my husband and and with my kids um and with that it does come a lot of responsibility too yeah. but because you can't always be the needy one but it is you know and but i've been able to help other people now that helped me get through it too you know well it, it's hard to talk about i mean because it's we're human we're perfect you know but i appreciate you opening up because i know that there if not one there's more people that will listen to this that got something out of it today yeah. and you helped them so yeah. and i never you. want that illusion of perfection mm -hmm. to do it because everything's a hot mess most of the time <laughs> and so it may look like i have it all together but i really don't we're just all so hot we're all messes just going, yeah we're just all going through it literally yeah. hot messes i feel like i'm sweating right now <laughs> <laughs> so we always like to end the podcast with a little bit of forward looking and you had some really big news a couple of weeks ago, you were invited to sing the national anthem for the Atlanta Braves yes. in Atlanta. I mean, that's big. It was huge. It was so, it was on the list. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that crazy wild dream list that you don't think will ever happen. It was on the list. And then it like went up a step when they had me, they said, we need to reschedule your anthem, but would you like to do God Bless America on this day? And then the anthem that day. Oh my gosh, I about, I literally jumped up. I was setting up for a gig when I got the email and I jumped up and down and was screaming. And the lady that, they, I don't even know her that well, we've just started playing together. She just <laughs> was jumping with me so excited because I was so happy. Um, so yeah, May the 8th, I'll get to go do God Bless America. And then June the 18th, I'll get to go do the National Anthem for the Atlanta Braves. Wow. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Is your family going to go with you? They are going to go with me for sure May 8th. I don't know about what we're doing in June, but my, yes, the kids, Scott and the kids, we've got it all booked now, so... And you mentioned that they're not really into music, but do they realize, like, for you, I mean, this in your industry, this is huge. Or are they just like, Mom, we're going to need some nacho money? <laughs> this is how much they're rodeo and not baseball. Annabelle was like, what's the Atlanta Braves? <laughs> And I'm like, child, are you kidding me? Because I was I had Javi Lopez on my wall yeah. when I was a teenager. And so I loved, we watched that whole, we loved baseball and we loved everything. They just haven't really watched it tons. And they haven't really been into it since they got out of it. They didn't care. Yeah. And so I don't know that they really grasped like how big of a deal it is and how hard it is. Some of the things I've gotten to do, I don't think that they understand how hard it is to get there. And I really, we don't talk about it a ton. Like and when I'm at home, we're at home and it's yeah. life's about them and rodeo and stuff like that for the most part they just know I have a show and I go you know so like we don't it's not really a huge anything just because I don't know we just don't make it that way and so but one day when they grow up and they're finding their way back. they realize yeah. our mom was amazing yeah she accomplished I, I hope a that lot. someday they'll realize like that was a really big you don't just all and they don't pick everybody you know what I mean no. like you just don't get to and it takes a lot to get there so well congratulations thank you I'm so excited about it I really am and so thank you again for inviting us to your farm. I know we have your beautiful barn behind us. And I watched y'all build that like yes. on Facebook. Yes. I am so envious. You have skill. Like you have. <laughs> I have a little bit. Not you have a tool belt. I mean, <laughs> you know how to wire a chandelier. And I'm like, Nathan, the light bulb's broke. Can you fix it? Like, I don't know. I have no skill. So like, did you just grow up learning? I only do. I do what I'm told. Okay. So Scott has all the skill and I just do what I'm told. Okay. So I follow instructions. If I need to learn how to do something, like I have wired plugs and lighting and things like that, yeah. I YouTube it. And then that's how I find out because I'm just kind of like, if I need it done, I want it done. And so, um, no, I did. I'd stained for hours and days and days and days. I stained and stained. Um, and the kids worked so hard. And so they know, they feel like they can build anything now and so we did we all built it late 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 nights a family project Fam months and months of it we were so happy when it's done so when you okay that's what i was going to ask because i don't know how that would work for us i mean did, scott didn't end up sleeping in the barn he it was a happy yeah. ending it would no it was happy ending and it was a relief there were tears like i was like is it ever gonna finish and then finally i was like can we please just hire somebody to do this you know and yeah. somebody do this or it's never gonna get done so we did hire a little tiny bit of it out but overall yeah it was us. my father-in-law came over all the time i mean we're talking every day yeah it, well i mean it was I'd come a good home year from gigs at night i come home from gigs 10 30 11 o'clock they're still out here working oh they'd gosh. be out here till one o'clock oh it was bad but it was fun. It was good times, good memories. Yes. And we've been, we've enjoyed it so much. It's made life so much better with the horses. And for when the world kind of shut down, it was a good yes, was thing so to great. focus on and so, do as so a great. family. So it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it Thank with us today. You.
So it's been a real treat to talk with Casey today. Thanks. I think you've shared a lot of wisdom. So thank, thank you for your time. You. We probably should wrap up, but we're gonna be like little lobsters. We're gonna melt. We are. So we appreciate Casey and we hope that you enjoy listening as much as I enjoy talking with her. And we'll be back in two weeks time. I'm gonna catch up with Sue McCool. She is the owner of Third Planet Brewery. That is a craft brewery in Niceville, Florida. They have some amazing beers. They've seen explosive growth since they opened in 2015. You mentioned it's you play there. It's an amazing venue. I love it. And they're great people. And that she has some very interesting business experience and stories to tell. So stay tuned. See you in two weeks. Bye. <laughs>